After a 20-year gap since his Volvo Ocean Race debut aboard Innovation Caverna, Australian David Witt is back for another lap of the planet, this time as skipper of Sunhung Kai Scallywag. As far as the team goes, I think we're a bunch of mates. To get a team on the start line in this race is the biggest achievement. He's brought with him the core of his long-standing teammates who have campaigned together over many miles aboard financial backer San Hang Lee's Super Maxi, competing in multiple Sydney Hobarts and other classic races. Initially, David's intention was to sail with as few crew as possible in order to keep the weight to a minimum. Seven men and no women featured in his team sheet for the prologue. We believe that there's about 200 kilos per person. Matt Free's taking two girls and we've got seven guys. We're nearly half a tonne lighter. After the realisation that having fewer crew than other teams lost them valuable time in the manoeuvres, David signed up their first female crew member, Annemieke Best from the Netherlands. She fitted straight into the scallywag mould, having sailed with the team on previous campaigns. The first few legs proved tricky for the team, learning the Volvo 65 and how to make it sail fast. A fifth place finish on leg one and a sixth on leg two into Cape Town piled the pressure on and navigator Steve Hales decided to step aside with teammate Antonio Fontes taking over on the navigation desk. Leg three was the first taste of the Southern Ocean for Sunhunkai Scallywag and it didn't take long for it to live up to its reputation. Beautiful Southern Ocean. I'm over the Southern Ocean. As the team headed towards Melbourne, they were battling with Turn the Tide on Plastic, holding them off for a fifth place finish. Another change in crew saw a boost in experience with former SCA navigator Libby Greenhouse joining the team. She had already lapped the planet on the Volvo 65s in the last edition, and this could be just what the team needed to propel them up the leaderboard. I think the skills I've got will, will benefit the team and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a good result. Leg four and the pressure was on to perform as Sun Hukai Scallywag raced towards their home port of Hong Kong and as they headed up the eastern coast of Australia, the team found themselves in last place but with options ahead. Well, this is a really important leg for us, you know, can't worry about not running last, we need to concentrate on trying to win. A tricky crossing of the light wind zone saw the fleet compress. Sun Hukai Scallywag rolled the dice, cutting west early, picking up the bigger breeze and cruising from last to first. Another good scare, fastest boat. However, things didn't go all their way. Up there, up there, up there. Okay, engine on, engine on. Seems to be finding new ways to try and lose a lead too, so. But main thing is we got him back on board, he's safe. But the story was written, and the city lights of Hong Kong showed them their way home as Sun Hung Kai Scallywag pulled off an incredible leg victory. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And everybody that's part of this team works so hard, and it's just great to get a get them a result, you know. As the team waved their goodbyes at the start of leg six and attention turned offshore once again, their tactics were different to the rest of the fleet. They split south early, but in the company of Team Axe and Abel, benefiting from stronger breeze, they led for a second time as they headed towards the equator once more. Libby Greenhouse, she's done it again. All these other guys, and they listen to the computer and we sort of point to where we want to go, and it seems to be working quite nicely. If it was for smart people, I'd be doing something else. Crossing the doldrums, the battle for the lead was tightening with Team Axe and Abel as they fought to get south and east to Auckland. As they reached New Zealand waters, there were only metres between the two. Very exciting. More exciting when we're in front, but uh, it's good that we've got a boat next to us. Finally, Sun Hunkai Scallywag crossed in second place for a second consecutive podium finish, and the atmosphere on board was very much on the up. With two podium finishes and consecutive offshore legs under their belts, David Witt was focused on staying at the front of the fleet. This is a big chance for Scallywag to actually stay there and do something or drop back towards the back of the pack. As the fleet headed south once again into the Southern Ocean, the teams began to pick up the big breeze and big swells, and the dangers of the leg were made ever more real after a Chinese jibe had pinned the boat on its side. The thing that really struck me when we're on our side is just the, the enormity of the responsibility for the welfare of the people on board. On March 25th, everything changed for David Witt Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. At approximately 1300 UTC, race control in Alicante was informed of a serious situation. British sailor John Fisher had been swept overboard in 35 knots of wind and a difficult sea state. The team conducted an exhaustive search for several hours in extremely challenging conditions, but were unable to cover their teammate. With the weather forecast due to deteriorate further, they retired from racing to head for landfall in Chile.
The news sends shockwaves throughout the fleet. To say that our thoughts are with the Scaliwa crew and all John's family. We want to yeah, give some strength to the guys uh, on board Scaliwa and the whole team, of course, all shore. We're a little sad in our heart, very sad in our heart. We know why. Uh, John Fisher's loss uh, sits very deep with us. It affected us all quite emotionally. We were very close to Scaliwa as a team. And I hope to see them uh, safely uh, on shore very, very soon. A delivery crew took the boat from Chile to Itajaí in Brazil after the team made the tough decision to continue participating in the race in John's memory. The biggest compliment I could give John is he was, the, he was the best team player I've ever seen. Put everyone else first. There's a whole lot of, you know, sort of an ethos that the Scallywags try and live by. You know, you know we never give up, we look after each other. We don't have to be the best, but we do it together. And, and probably the most important moral of our team is loyalty and I, you know, obviously I've had a lot of time to think about it in the last 10 days, but I'm pretty much describing John Fisher. I'm not really describing the Scallywag team, I'm describing John Fisher. So, um, for me, yeah, he was my best mate and uh, Sunday's going to be a little bit weird. It'll be the first time I've gone to sea without him in 12 years. So, but, you know, we've had time to deal with it ourselves as much as we can, but, um, you know, like you say, the support we've had from, you know, within the Volvo family has been amazing. I think, you know, it takes a special people to do this race, whether you're the skipper or you're the crew. And I think yesterday when the boat arrived at the dock was a pretty moving sort of thing. Um, the best thing we can do in John's memory is get on the job, get on with it on Sunday. You know, if he was standing behind me right now, he'd be telling me to harden up, don't be soft and get on with it. And that's what we're going to do on Sunday. With an intense quick turnaround by everyone in Sun Hunkai Scallywag and the Volvo Ocean Race Boatyard, the team made the start line for leg eight. Understandably, the crew wasn't straight back to the podium placing level of racing that they had reached prior to the accident on leg six. Three consecutive seven place finishes have seen Sun Hunkai Scallywag drop into the battle for sixth with Turn the Tide on Plastic. As friends and competitors, David Witt and Dee Kafari found themselves leaving Gothenburg with just one point separating them. For the Scallywags, the final leg was a chance to reflect on all that they had faced and come through together. David Witt was determined to keep the team united and to complete the race in recognition of their lost friend and teammate, John Fisher. Sixth on the line into The Hague put Sun Hunkai Scallywag on equal points with Dee Kafari's Turn the Tide on Plastic, the final import race being the deciding factor. Early in that race, Scallywag were ahead, only to snare a turning mark, effectively anchoring them as the fleet sailed past, elevating Turn the Tide on Plastic into sixth overall and relegating Sun Hunkai Scallywag into seventh. Sun Hunkai Scallywag was the first privateer team to enter the race in more than a decade, playing the game their own way. As crewmates second and friends first, David Witt and the Scallywag team has been a proving ground for the youngest sailor in this edition of the race and their strong team spirit will be a model for crews to come.